Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover. And check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. What are we doing today? Well, we are looking at MongoDB. I want to give you guys a little bit more details on MongoDB, both the Docker version and the cloud version. I also will continue to point you in the direction of using the container version of Mongo, and I'll get into why. But for now, let's look at setting up Mongo in Docker. I already have Docker installed. If you don't know how to use Docker, you really should learn. I will do a video at some point on installing Docker. It's pretty straightforward. You just go to uh, Docker, find the version for your computer and install it. It's, it's pretty straightforward if you know how to install software for whatever system type you're using, whether it's Mac, Linux, or Windows. So I already have Docker installed. The, the Docker daemon is running, so I can do a Docker PS, I can do a Docker images and so docker is running here in my command line all i need to do to set up mongo this is why this is so easy just do a docker pull mongo and we're going to give it a tag of latest and docker is going to go ahead and reach out to the docker repository and it's going to find the latest version of mongo and it's going to download it as you see it doing now this takes just a few seconds and everything will be installed ready for us to make use of it right away without waiting uh, again so we're done already we already have everything that we need to run a mongo container to do that is also very easy we just do a docker run now there are a few things that we need to look at here when running a Mongo container, I always set mine up so that it's as if it's running uh, right here on my local machine. I wanna also show you guys some of the other things that you should pay attention to if you're doing this in production. I've previously showed you that you can just do a Docker run, dash D, add the dash P for port, and map the traditional 27017 to 27017 and then the name that you're giving this container so this would be you know whatever you, whatever you want it to be called so this would be user defined a name and then the name of the container that you want to run for us it would be mongo uh, latest that we just that we just set up we can do this if i hit enter you'll see i have another sha and i can do a docker ps and there the container is running uh, you'll see that it has that user defined name for the name. The port is mapped just like I, I would like from the default Mongo location to the default Mongo location inside. And that's the image that we pulled. So that's great. Some of the details that I left out here, if you wanted to set this up in production, uh, I use this uh, earthly.dev uh, this is a blog website and the, I just feel like they do a better job explaining all of the different options here. I'll link again to this in the description of this video. But if you scroll down uh, about halfway through, you'll see uh, once we get to security, this is where they're really going to have all of the options that you're going to need. So previously in a few lines up, they show you that if you want to keep your data persistent, you add this dash V and then just tell it where to store it on your local machine. That's really straightforward. And then the other part that I did not cover because it's not required to run a container, but if you needed to set this up for production, you probably would want to put a username and password. And this is how you do that. So you just add a few commands to what we already did. Let's go ahead and close this container down. So let's do, let's do a docker stop user defined name. And you'll see that it stops that container. If I do a docker ps, the container is no longer running. So let's start a new container at using these criteria here. So let's do a docker run dash d uh, dash p 27017. 27017 dash dash name uh, with params dash v for mounting the data 
data colon slash data. This is the standard, so you probably want to keep this. You can do whatever you want here, but if you dig into it, this is most likely what will be the case for you. And if you're using somebody else's, they're going to be looking for it here. So if you're working in a group, I would leave this the standard. If you want to have it somewhere else and you're using your own project, then go ahead and do whatever you want. Uh, just make sure that you remember where you're putting it. And then dash E, and then you put Mongo DB underscore init db underscore root underscore username equals root user dash e and this is how you pass params there mongo db underscore init db underscore root underscore password equals uh, let's just do root password you obviously would want to make this something secure if you're doing it for a production uh, application and then again the image that we're using here so like that and we get a different SHA and if I do a docker ps you'll see that we have a new container running with those params here that I, I named it with params so that we would see that okay so we have our container running and we want to enter it we do a docker exec dash it the name of the container which we decided was with params and then bash once we are inside of this the one area that i will point out in the documentation that is different everything's good here except for this command here um, <clears throat> They, they no longer have the Mongo, the plain old Mongo like that, if you, it's really small here. But they're telling you to essentially run Mongo like that. They actually removed that in the latest version, and now it's Mongosh. So Mongo shell. And then here you're connected uh, to the Mongo running inside of that container. And then you can do all of the commands available in MongoDB. So you can do like a show DBS. You can create a database. You can insert data and all that. So that's how you do uh, that. So I wanted to show you guys those items. Let's look at the cloud version now. That's how we do it in Docker, uh, which in my opinion is super straightforward, super easy, really quick to get set up. In order to use the Mongo cloud version, you just go to Google and type in Mongo. There's a whole bunch of links, ads, so you can use the, the ad link or the regular one, doesn't matter. You get in there and you're going to need to set up an account. It's the very first thing you have to do. You have to have an account. After you get your account set up, then inside you can create a project. Let's go ahead and create a new project together. And I always go with shared. We want to use shared and then the cloud provider and region. Use whatever is closest to you. I, I use the Iowa one and then the tier you're going to want to stick with the free stuff um, you can give it a name cluster showcase whatever you want create the cluster uh, and I guess you can only have one free cluster so once you have a a cluster set up that was, there was pretty much only uh, one or two other steps left to that uh, and then you, it'll ask you to create a user if you want to create a user. You have to uh, allow your specific IP address. So if you're using this for production, you'll have to make sure that you also know what IP address you're going to be connecting to this from. So you have to have a user. You have to have an IP address whitelisted. And then it'll also walk you through this. So you have to have a connection method. So which method you are going to use to connect the shell right from your application uh, or compass or visual studio code if you choose say your application then you can also pick what language you're using and then what version and then it'll give you the snippet to use now you'll notice that uh, they do not put your password in here you also have to set up a password once you have all of that configuration set up 
uh, which is a lot. And again, this is one of the reasons why I don't really care for the cloud version. Their website is kind of clunky. It's slow as all get out. I don't feel like it's very cheap. I feel like the free version is really underpowered. So for that reason, I, I stick to the Docker version and you have more control over it anyway since you're running it on your own equipment. But this is available if you wanted to use it. Uh, you can replace this right inside of your, uh, you know, in my instance, I usually use Node.js. Uh, you can plop this right into your Mongo client connection URL and put your password in there and it works just fine, uh, just as if it's local. Uh, but again, the, all of the extra configuration, the whitelisting IPs, the setting up users and team, the lack of speed with the website when you're trying to navigate around and get all of that configuration done just makes it for me not worth it. The base package is like $25, it ends up being like $25 a month and that only gets you a few gigs of data. So it, to me, it's just not worth it. So you can go in here and see all of the databases and collections you have. You can insert test data and it fills the whole thing up. I mean, you only get 500 meg of free data when you're choosing the, the absolutely free one, which is not very much. You'll see it's just a few databases with a few collections in it. But you can play around with this, but this is available and I did want to cover this. So there is the cloud version. Comment below with what you think of it. I hope that this video has been helpful for you guys. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and stay tuned for more awesome content. And as always, have a great day. Mm -hmm.